Those Days with the Monsters, Part 62. Kirill was deeply grateful for Nrix's patience. It took a long time to extricate himself from under the body, but her eyes stayed closed the whole time. Even when he whimpered with distress and disgust as his claw pulled away from, possibly through, some kind of tissue, she didn't move beyond inflating and deflating her vocal sac. When he finally pried them both free, blood soaked and shaking, he glanced down and found her eyes still closed. Before he walked away, Kirill found himself looking back one more time at the body. He knew he shouldn't, even as he turned his head, but it was too late to stop. Some kind of tense knot in his chest seemed to loosen slightly, but the spinning in his head and the whirling in his stomach made up for it. It wasn't as bad as the first time, when the other Tizics had pulled the body off of him, but somehow that made it worse. In an open space there was upwind of most of the grey mist. Kirill found what looked like some kind of decorative fluid feature. He hoped it was water, for his and Rix's sake, but he couldn't afford to gamble. At the same time, if it was water, could he afford to pass it by without any guarantee of finding more? What do I do? He briefly considered dipping one claw into the liquid, or sniffing it, but it might just as easily be something horrible and toxic. There was no way to tell what it might do to him if he treated it carelessly. Really, there's only one answer, isn't there? Kirill glanced down at the little bundle of grey and green in his arms, swallowed hard, and spoke. On my planet, there's a game we play sometimes. It's called Yes, No. He paused for a minute, and Ruxa stirred slightly, tilting her head. He thought it might be a hint to go on. Hopefully it was, because he needed to go on whether she was asking him to or not. One person stands in the middle and can't speak. They can only nod up and down for yes, and shake their head sideways for no. Everyone else asks them questions. A quick memory of him sitting in the corner of the room while the clutch played flashed into his head. They'd been able to say yes or no, but a small lie seemed to be necessary here. Can you play yes no with me, Rixa? After a moment, Rixa nodded. Kirill felt the breath leave him in a rush. This might just work. I'm going to turn you around and ask you to look at something for a minute, and I'm going to ask a few questions about it. Kirill's stomach sank as he realised that might sound scary for such a small child. Honestly, everything probably sounds scary to her. Everything sounded scary to him. He couldn't imagine how bad it must be for someone so young. Hastily, he added, The first round of yes-no is supposed to be easy, so I won't ask you anything hard. Rixa nodded awkwardly again. Thank you. For, for playing with me, I mean. Clumsily, Kirill shifted her around so she could look at the fluid feature. Right. Now open your eyes and look at the thing in front of you for a minute. He couldn't tell if Nrixa had actually followed through, but she'd kept her eyes shut when he asked her to, so she probably had. Is it safe to touch? Nrixa tipped her head slightly, then nodded. Is it water? There was a slight sound, and Nrixa's vocal sac inflated. Kirill didn't know if Tizix could actually smell things, but it sounded like she was smelling. After a moment she nodded, and he took a deep breath. A lot depended on whether Nrixa got the right answer here. Is it safe to drink? After what seemed like an interminable wait, the small grey head nodded again. All the breath raced out of Kirill's lungs for a moment. Thank you, oh thank you. Kirill wasn't sure who or what he was actually thanking never having been religious, but something needed to be thanked, and he couldn't seem to make himself speak right now. Nebulous universal thanks would have to do. Right, close your eyes again. As soon as he was reasonably sure Nrixa had done so, he cupped some of the, yes it was water, thank whatever he was thanking again, and began to clean the crusted slime from Nrixa's face and back. She made a clicking chirp, and Kirill wished for the hundredth time so far that he had a second translator. If we make it off this planet. What an unlikely thought that was. The first thing I'm doing is getting a few more translators. I'd need something with better pockets. He started considering how to get enough translators, as if there was nothing more urgent to be done. 
as if there was all the time and chance in the world for it. He didn't even wonder if he was distracting himself with implausible daydreams. Nruxa was cleaned shockingly easily, the green sliding neatly off her smooth leathery plates, and Kirill worked on washing himself free of splatter as best he could. It was no good to get all the blood off of Nruxa if she could still see it on him, but washing himself while holding a small Tizik's child was no small feat. She didn't seem to protest, but that wasn't necessarily a good sign. He knew very little about small children on the whole, but he could remember that sometimes children gave up protesting. Rixa could just as easily be in that condition. The sound of the water feature flowing began to sound like young Elam, chattering away, probably because I'm holding a child. He speculated idly, but his chest hurt a bit. It almost felt like there was something in there poking him. Well, no time to figure it out now. Later. If there is a later. So, <clears throat> uh, right. Y you should be able to open your eyes now. Kirill moved upstream, away from the water, now tainted green. Are you thirsty? W wait, I'm not even sure if Tizix drink water. Do you drink water? After a moment of rapid chirping and clicking, Nrixa jolted a bit and began nodding vigorously her head not quite following a straight line. Kirill's frills, black and red, pulsed a faint bit of white along the spines. He could tell exactly when Rixa had remembered the game of yes-no, and somehow it made things less horrible for, for absolutely no good reason he could think of. Right then, can you show me how Tizix drink? If they had to cup fluid in their appendages, for instance, it might be difficult for Nrixa to do properly at her young age, and his talons weren't exactly good at that. Nrixa squirmed to get down, and the moment she was on the ground, she scurried forward to the water, and then, Kirill was deeply confused, and it showed in small teal spots along his spine. The way she drank should have been horrifying. Nrixa's mandibles were opened wide, her file-like tongue catching the surface of the water and drawing it up rapidly. It should have been a profoundly disturbing sight, but it wasn't. Not because the action wasn't deeply disconcerting, but because Nrixa was the one doing it. Come to think of it, this wasn't the first time something terrifying had become less so because of the one doing it. How long it had been since the first time he was frightened by the Kuman's teeth-bearing expressions, or their fearsome strength? When was the last time he was actually frightened of Alex's quick movements? or of Sleepy's habit of appearing like a wandering soul. Somewhere in the remnants of the building, something clattered, the sound of rocks falling down a slope or rubble sliding. Kirill returned to the present with a jolt and a quick shake of his frills, nervous yellow with flecks of purple shame. He couldn't afford to distract himself thinking about the Cumans. Rixa still needed him. Uh, are, you, are you done? He asked in a rush when Rixa looked up. She nodded with a little click and Kirill breathed a short sigh of relief. Nrixa twitched and looked around wildly at the sound. Kirill realised too late that it probably sounded like a Tizik's air sac inflating. No, 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 it, it's just me, like this. Kirill took a deep breath, trying to make some noise but not too much, and then let it out in a sigh. I hope nothing heard that. Wait, no, this is the Tizik's. I hope no one heard that. They weren't things people, like Nrixa. Nrixa took a moment, then clicked and bobbed her head awkwardly. Okay, so far so good. Um, Nrixa, I need to take a drink too. Can you look around and shout if anyone is coming? Nrixa rattled rapidly, nodding her head again. She didn't quite have the hang of it, Kirill noticed, bobbing her head like Sneezy's avian creatures rather than nodding on a hinge. Then again, he'd probably horribly butchered her name all day, so he didn't have any room to comment. With a sigh of relief, Kirill stuck his mouth into the water and began to drink. It was warm, but he wasn't going to complain. Elem needed more water than he'd gotten lately. All too soon, though, a slightly sour taste made him pause and raise his head. Rixa clicked inquisitively. The water flowing from the top of the fountain began to have a slight tone of green. It must be recycled from lower down. It was time to move on. Nrixa reached up as Kirill bent down to lift her. Once he had her, she curled into his arms, her head pressed slightly against his neck. He could feel her air slack inflate slightly, 
before she clicked twice, shifting a bit and snuggling in against the scales. How is she so small? That wasn't the right question exactly, but it took Carol some time to find the right one. How is someone this like this? Precious. This wasn't an assessment of value to the clutch, or importance to the team, or really anything he knew how to compare it to, but she was very precious all the same. Carol felt like the whole past, present and future weighed about 12 units, and leaned into his neck with far too much trust. Again, the thought raced through his mind not alone, never alone. If Carol could see his own frills, he would see that they had turned a colour that he'd never seen on an Elam before, a colour that hadn't been seen on an Elam in a hundred cycles of the galactic year. Now that's taken care of. Are you hungry, Nyrxa? Thanks for tuning in. Maybe check this one out next.